my video. One, two, three, one, two, three, testing. This is for test, one, two, three. Hi there. Hi, uh, Tatiana, how are you? Marianne here, just checking as well. Hi, is Marianne. My... I, I, I can see and hear you very well, so I guess it's working. I mean, at least for the online. Good, good. <laughs> okay, well, catch you yeah. later. Catch oh. you. <laughs> Hello, Michael. This is Saipan speaking into the English channel. Do you hear me? Okay, I switch to Chinese. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I can't. Please uh, take your seats. I hope everyone had a very good lunch, so they've got more power for the rest of the day. You can uh, take, I think, uh, you can move closer to the, to the stage. All right, let's start. Uh, once again, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everybody, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to all those who joined us online and, of course, on site for the workshop Mr. Metaverse Blurring Letter of the Law. I'm Vadim Glushenko. I will be moderating today's Handle it, handle it. Good afternoon to the main session on dynamic coalitions, how they can con to contribute and support to the Global Digital Compact. My name is Marcus Kummer. I'm the uh, co-facilitator of the IGF Dynamic Coalitions Coordination Group. Next to me is 
Jutta Kroll, who's my co-facilitator. And we have a session that is divided into two parts. The first part will look more at how the dynamic collisions can contribute to the IGF plus model. And the second part will look at uh, how they can contribute to the global digital compact. I have uh, the first panel here and to start also to my very left, there is the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Technology and the Secretary General Amadeep Deep Singh. And next to me, we have Yuta Kroll, as already said, on the left and to the right, there is Paul Mitchell, he's the MAG chair, also member of the leadership panel. And to his right is Wout Denatris, Dynamic Coalition of Standards. And to the very right is Mark Carvel, who will be the rapporteur of this session. <clears throat> Let me start by saying a few words about the Dynamic Coalition. They came into being right at the first IGF meeting back in 2006. There was the idea, the notion that there is a need for some work between the annual meetings and somebody came up with the name, let's call them Dynamic Coalitions. Right now we have 24 of them. They are very diverse and they're self-formed and they're autonomous. They abide by some common principles. They all agree to be open, to have open archives and to be open and inclusive. So this is the very basic notion and they have also to produce an annual report. But again, they're autonomous. And right now we will discuss and look how they can maybe evolve and make a positive contribution to the IGF plus model. With that, I would like to give the floor to the MAG chair, who may have a few ideas in this matter. Please, Paul. Oh, my apologies. I have forgotten to introduce the co-moderator who is online. You can see her waiting patiently. Hello, Tatiana. And can you maybe also say a few words and give your uh, vision? And I would invite you then also to be a tough uh, moderator and ask follow-up questions and make it hard for the uh, panelists. And also to look a bit at the online chat and bring in the participants who part uh, are remote participants. Tatiana? Uh, thank you very much, Marcus, and welcome everybody, especially my co fellow, fellow, co -fellow online participants. I want to say that I'm excited yet again to co moderate the session on dynamic online coalitions because uh, we frequently forget that IGF is not once a year event that work is going on in, in between the annual IGFs. And dynamic coalitions is some sort of, for me, institutionalized process which channels this work, which splits it apart into different channels and then brings the outcome back to the IGF. And yes, I am going to be a very tough moderator, so be ready, all the panelists. I'm <laughs> going to ask about actionable outcomes, about the significance of your outcomes for the IGF Plus and then later for Global Digital Compact and, and WISIS Plus 20. So with this, uh, back to you, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. And my apologies to Jenna Fang. I forgot to introduce her. She is a remote participant and she's a remote panelist and she represents the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. But now, again, back to you, Paul. Thanks very much. So when I think about the 24 dynamic coalitions that we have already, they like, they strike me that they all are ways to try to get synergy towards a common set of goals, whether that's building a new product set, building a new policy, language, building a new regulator idea, they're tuning like-minded people and organizations together for a common purpose. In this, it's very similar from my perspective to this, the process of developing standards, whether those are television format standards or uh, standards for building high-rise apartment buildings 
they all share common structure of being able to define a problem concisely, iterate on what the problem is and what, what needs to be done to address it, and then to put voices in place and roles in place to actually create an implementation. Now the 24s that are already in existence, there's a vibrant economy already. It, there's opportunities to tear it, to take this forward. And what's been, I think, most striking to put a light on the subject um, is that it's it's taken taken flight through individual individually perceived needs and wants. Um, in that sense, it's it's been uh, a journey of perspectives for each of them. As we move forward, when we think about IT, IGF plus model, which is really about finding ways to implement ideas that have been fomented in, in an IGF process or in an IGF environment, we are getting to the point where these are taking flight with really complicated and important ideas. And in terms of timing with the IGF plus model in the background from the work done before and the, the, um, the approach right now uh, moving forward towards the the, um, <clears throat> the 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 uh, sorry I'm blanking so just collect my thoughts and end here thank you for this initial comments uh, one thing I forgot to say, we have a very strict time control and I ask all the speakers to respect the three minutes uh, timeline. With that, can I give the floor to you, Yuta? Or take one microphone. Yeah, thank you for having me on, on this panel. I'm representing the Dynamic Coalition on Children's Rights and the Children's Environment, which started their work in 2007. And then it was called the Dynamic Coalition on Child Online Safety. And referring to this objective of the Dynamic Coalition, I would like to quote from the UN Secretary General's Roadmap on Digital, digital Cooperation which has outlined the prevalence of child sexual exploitation and abuse as a major concern and referring also to the international community standing united in its shared resolve to protect children. When we decided to rename the dynamic coalition from child online safety to children's rights in the digital environment, this was a deliberate decision to underline that children are humans, so they enjoy all human rights. But given a certain vulnerability of this group, they afford also the rights dedicated to them in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. As, and just recently, more explicitly laid down in General Command Number 25 on children's rights in the digital environment, several members of the Dynamic Coalition have been part of the working group on this achievement of the, of the General Command. Having said that, I would like to go more into the details of these rights of children as a cross-cutting issue in internet governance. And there, that is where I come to the cooperation that we need between the dynamic collisions and between all the other platforms that we have within the internet governance ecosystem. The Dynamic Coalition on Children's Rights has a strategic focus on facilitating the stakeholder dialogue on human rights, advocating for children, being respected as rights holders and early adopters of technology. And this leads me directly to the, the long-lasting debates that we have had with the freedom of expression community, and that is Another example where we see that we only can address the issue when we have a balanced approach 
between these two ob objectives. When we look at the developments in the technology that we see so far, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and now innovations like the metaverse, all of these are impacting not only on the lives of children, but on all our lives. And therefore, they are matters that affect also the rights of children, as referred to in Article 12, the right to be heard. Let me eventually refer to the right of privacy, which holds some ambiguity. Privacy needs to be protected regardless of age, but at the same time, privacy needs to be balanced with other rights to protection. For example, the right to be protection from exploitation and abuse. I see I have to stop here, but we will continue the debate further on. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Jutta. And let's now turn to Wout, Internet Standards Security and Safety Coalition, please. That's better. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, my name is Walter Natris, and as he said, I'm the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition Internet Standards Security and Safety. Uh, this, the question I would like to raise here is how this is not working, the feedback. None of what's happening. Can I use your sound, Marcus? Is this better? Can I start at zero again, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, as already said, I'm about an answer, and now let's go into the question I would like to raise, is that how is the IGF going to ensure that multi-stakeholder IGF initiatives, such as dynamic coalitions, are recognized for what they produce as outcomes, which often include policy recommendations, best practices, and guidelines? I believe this question is relevant to the output of all intersessional IGF activities, so BPS, policy networks included. However, it has always been more difficult for the dynamic coalitions as team of experts and specialists in their field, working to their own agendas and programs of work, and without any financial and content-related secretarial support provided by the IGF, to achieve any formal recognition for the results of their dedicated and hard work. But why is this? Question important and relevant. And now I speak for a moment only of my own dynamic coalition, which I coordinate, but I won't go into content. IS3C has following motto, which encapsulates its aim to make the internet more secure and safer. And our goal is to achieve this by speeding up the deployment of existing security related internet standards and ICT best practices. At the IGF this week, we are presenting the outcomes of three global studies. Firstly, related to the security by design of the Internet of Things. Secondly, security, education and skills. And thirdly, thirdly, data governance and security. All three reports of last year's work by dedicated teams of experts in their respective working groups come with the recommendations and recognize best practices for decision takers in industry and national and regional policy makers. But how are we to reach them and to have these outcomes recognized if there's no platform or mechanism in place for sharing and disseminating these outcomes. This question becomes even more relevant for the IS3C next year, when we expect to have maybe 10 working groups active in different fields. IS3C is supported by some DCs, has shared some ideas and specific proposals with the MAG on how to resolve this question, as a contribution to enabling stakeholders coalitions where it may have similar output-oriented objectives and expectations to become an integral part of the IGF Plus movement. And I'll stop there and later come back to the suggestions. Thank you, Walt. Also, thank you for respecting the time limit. And now we have our online participant, Jenna Fung from the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Please, Jenna. Thank Thank you very much for having me um, at this panel today. Um, as part of the member of the YCIG, um, different from many other DCs, mostly we contribute to strengthening digital capacity building. But at the same time, you've as um, you know, very important stakeholder of our next generations. 
I believe they have to have the capacity to contribute to other areas too. This year with my colleague from the Youth Coalition, uh, we managed to form working groups to get the youth from the global community to make workshop and submit it to IGF. That's a good process that the youth is taking the initiative to getting involved in the whole ecosystem and try to try to lead the discussion um, on topics they are interested or topics that um, that are concerned by um, by the youth. But at the same time, I believe youth has to do more work um, to close their knowledge gap in order to constructively contribute to um, to other key areas that is the main focus for the IGF plus. Um, for sure, um, on one of the other session at the Global Youth Summit this year, we addressed the, the importance of beating digital literacy uh, when our next generation, when they started young, we were saying we should making it compulsory. But at the same time, we are lacking the people to actually train the trainers because teacher as public school system may not necessarily have the knowledge to teach what is needed nowadays. And we believe you can fill up um, this role in contributing. But I believe uh, there is a big need in collaborating with different DCs in the IGF, because like I said earlier, um, youth has to advance the knowledge in different er different area in order to contribute. And I believe it is also a process for us not only to work towards a common goal and with a common purpose, but also that will help um, with making the youth voice more diverse and inclusive at the same time, um, at the same time, being able to actually reflect the youth perspective at the same time, being able to address the issue. So I think these are the main thing uh, that we have had from the work we have done in YCIG this year. Um, looking forward to further discuss it later on. Thank you. Thank you for that. And indeed, it is important to hear the voice of digital natives. I'm a digital immigrant. And somebody once pointed out, normally it's not the immigrants who make the laws, but the natives. And here, I think uh, it's good to have you on the panel. Uh, Tatiana, would you have any comments, follow-up questions, or also have you uh, followed a little bit the chat in the Zoom? Uh, thank you, Marcus. Hello from somebody who is between digital natives and digital immigrants. Uh, there has been no messages from the chat, but I listened to uh, our panelists, uh, our discussions with great interest. And what really struck me is that um, everybody mentioned uh, the issue of cooperation, cooperation between dynamic coalitions. But while I recognize the importance of the importance of cooperation, bringing it together with my idea of maybe tangible and actionable outcomes, I wanted to ask first of all, uh, I, I want to frame the question in different way for different panelists. So Yuta, uh, first for Yuta, Yuta, your dynamic coalition really has uh, has done a lot of work in terms of protecting uh, children online in terms of safety of children and you uh, comprise you have lots of experts on board I just wanted to ask you in terms of really delivering your outcomes and channeling them into the IGF plus process which dynamic coalitions would be the most beneficial to work with uh, more or less the same question goes to Jenna Jenna uh, in terms of cooperation um, how, how do you see in the context of the IGF plus cooperation between dynamic coalitions and, 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 and youth dynamic coalition? Um, how, a few ideas how to streamline these. Uh, and to vote a bit of a different question, because I do agree with you that perhaps the dynamic coalitions need more recognition and need more instruments to, to become more visible. But, um, so again, I would like to ask you, how do you see cooperation between other coalitions? Because you also mentioned this, 
but um, what I wanted to ask you is this um, interplay between the outcomes of dynamic collisions and visibility, uh, like your dynamic collisions uh, produce several reports, right? Uh, how do you see your coalition channeling this outcome, delivering these results in the broader context of the IGF plus? So what I want to ask you is how this help that you need, the visibility and support that you need would, would support your actionable outcomes. I hope that it is not too convoluted, but please let me know if it is. And Marcus, you decide who responds first. Thank you for that. That's a very good question. Uh, we originally had thought to have uh, Amadeep uh, here only for the second panel, but as he is here, I would like to take advantage of your presence. But if you don't feel like it, if you're already at this stage, would like to have, we prefer waiting. Or... Okay, thank you for that. Uh, well, the question you ask, I think, is the crux of the matter. And I don't know who would like to answer that. I'm looking to Paul, or you would? Okay. Okay. So I think the question you asked really gets to how does it, how does this all get actioned so that good happens? I think that's the key challenge. And the key appro approach is to be able to reach out to those with common interests define what it means to actually have an implementation of whatever this this outcome this this work has become has defined and then work through the process to get supporters that ultimately can put it into put into position for operations or execution depending on whatever it is that it is if it's um, regulation resources or policy resources or technical implementation resources. The key is to be um, buttoned up and work with through the process to take it to those who will actually implement. And this, I view it pretty much like a standards development process in which you start with figuring out what needs to be done and and what problem you're trying to solve. I think the, the examples here that we're using with the, with the outputs of the dynamic coalitions are problems needing to be solved and the, the coalitions doing the solving. The next challenge is to actually get the solve, get what's in needed to actually implement the solving and get it um, at scale. And wow, thank you, Paul. Yes, and thank you for that question, Tatjana, because it's probably the hardest question that we have in front of us. Um, when I look at the dem dynamic coalition as it's working now, basically I have the question, who do we direct our output to? Is it not the MAC chair? Is it the leadership panel? We don't know yet. Is it the tech envoy? Is it the UNDESA? Or nobody in this process? And I think that that's the first question that we, that we need to solve is who actually is going to make the outcome a, a, a little bit more official, because how can it get an IGF stamp on front of the, of, of, of the report that the coalition is writing? Um, we have some ideas on that, on how to make that possible. For my own dynamic coalition, IS3C, what we came up with is a public, pol a public review to use the IGF review system to say, okay, this is our findings. These are our recommendations. What are your comments? And that way, everybody around the world literally can comment to what we propose to do in a draft version. And then we come up with a more final version. And that could be one step towards a better recognition. But the next step is how do we get it on, officially on the IGF website as, as an output? And secondly, how are we going to organize, and I mean as an IGF community, organize ourselves to actually drive the outputs, for example, through capacity building programs or through, I don't know, seminars around the world, presentations to regional IGFs or to, to government or industry bodies. 
but we need to find a way, perhaps with the leadership panel, to disseminate the major outcomes of, of the IGF. And that would make the major difference, perhaps, because then it gets a dissemination. And I hope this answers your question a little bit. Thank you, Walt. And I uh, would also like to open it for the floor. Are there comments, questions from the floor? But before, maybe Utah, would you like also to react? Yes, of course, I would like to react. And I think the question was which uh, of the dynamic collisions of the 24 or the 23, if I take ours out, we would uh, prefer to cooperate or to collaborate. And um, as it is with the um, with the children's rights, I would also not prioritize one right over another right. So I would not prioritize any of the dynamic collisions. Um, putting children's rights uh, right in the digital environment is a cross-cutting issue. So there are links of our work to the link of, I would say, most of the dynamic coalitions. Um, we advocate for the principle of the best interest of the child as it is laid down in Article 3 of the UN Convention. And if in our work and in the work of the dynamic coalitions, everyone would have a look at what is in the best interest of the child, I would say that we, we come a major step forward to have human rights and children's rights uh, in a good way in the digital environment. We have been collaborating with the Dynamic Coalition on Artificial Intelligence and Internet of Things in a quite concrete way. We've also been in cooperation with the Dynamic Coalition on Core Internet Principles, for example, and of course, we have there some debates whether core internet principles have uh, integrated the, the prioritization of the best interest of the child, but that is necessary to come to the best solutions. Thank you. Thank you. And I see a request for the floor from the floor. And I know it's Sandra, but could you maybe nevertheless for the benefit of the other participants here, introduce yourself before you ask your question. Please, Sandra. Thank you very much. My name is Sandra Hoberichter, and I'm speaking now as someone who is involved or is sharing the Dynamic Coalition on Schools on Internet Governance. I'm um, organizing one school myself, and um, actually there should have been a part, uh, speaker from us. I don't know if he appeared. Um, the, the main question on how schools could contribute to, or how the dynamic coalition could contribute to the global digital compact could be answered from the schools on internet governance very concretely in terms of that um, there is a good um, tradition, meanwhile, that these schools are organizing practical works, so-called practicums, and many times uh, these schools are uh, taking on a very actual a topic which is going on on the UN level. And uh, I am aware of two schools, the one that I'm responsible myself, but also another school, um, took uh, the opportunity to submit a contribution to the Global Digital Compact. So to say it was part of the curriculum uh, to go through the submission form and make a submission and agree on all these things within this group of fellows. Um, I think, and I'm pretty sure it's already uploaded to the website, and I would encourage all the other schools on internet governance, and we will foster this from the Dynamic Coalition as well, to participate in these global processes. Global Digital Compact is by for sure not the last opportunity. There might be other UN and global processes, and I think if there comes input from this level, that would be helpful for both sides. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. There will be actually a speaker, a representative of the uh, Dynamic Coalition on Schools on Internet Governance on the second part of the panel, which you had already addressed, but that doesn't matter. It was a very welcome contribution in any case. Yes, Polly. Microphone. Just to say, um, we have someone with a question online. Okay. 
have somebody uh, who, yes, please. well no I, th I think Jenna raised your hand so Jenna would you like to go to go ahead yeah sure I I, uh, I would like to go ahead before uh, we figure out the logistic on site uh in response to your questions and and also just to uh, add a few things that vote mentioned earlier I believe um the youth at the moment um unlike other DC we don't really have someone to organize a report annually simply because maybe the youth coalition still has to do a lot of work to make um the structure of the coalition to function slightly more effectively in order to make concrete output because right now if you can see the work we have done this year mostly we are on focusing on capacity building uh webinar and uh that's you know one thing we're doing uh if we are talking about contributing to the actual policy making process, we are just like forming working groups that uh, help the youth to come up with workshop proposal for IGF. So compared to so many other DC, I think we there's still a long way for us to to get there in order to get the youth voice officially recognized, just like what Vote mentioned earlier. And I think um, IGF has sh should do something to get the reports of different DCs. Um, um, you know, upload on the website because taking the youth initiative as an example, every year um, we will have news report uploaded uh, on the website from different youth initiative. And me as a coordinator for the Asia Pacific uh, YIGF also, I put so much effort in including all the Asia Pacific uh, comments uh, from those conferences uh, in those reports because that's one way to make um, comments or contribution accessible to different stakeholders and I think that's a one simple way for us to do um, in terms of collaborations I believe anyone on the panel or any members of other DC can easily contribute and provide insights to newcomers because to newcomers um, they are very new to internet governance and everything is very new uh, so something as simple as a webinar between different dynamic coalition will be very beneficial uh, and will be insightful for the youth. And I believe that will be um, that will be able to contribute back to our community in the long run, because, like I said, we need to close the gap um, within the youth community at the same while they are trying to um, contribute to capacity building for newcomers but i think like you've like me who participate here for like five years i start to feel like i am stuck in between like i can't talk about like i need to get heard without any standing ground um i have to slowly adjusting myself to find some some kinds of focus on certain topic but I still i feel like lacking knowledge um that I can contribute to. So um, I believe if there that kind of contributions or collaboration, I mean, sorry, correct myself, that kind of collaboration between DC, uh, it's something I would like to see. And lastly, to add, um, in terms of report from the youth community, I think that's something we should work on. And then uh, in terms of methodologies or how to maintain a working group to get that things done, I think that's something the youth has to take initiative to learn from other uh, DC in order to make their opinion official and recognized instead of repetitively mentioning in different occasions that youth is not heard. Thank you. Thank you. Tatiana, did you want to come in as well? Uh, yes, Marcus. Perhaps before I give it back to you, um, what again, what really struck me in all these discussions is that vowed intervention, which came right after Paul, partially answered my questions, which I had to Paul after his intervention. So basically, Paul was elaborating on reaching out. Uh, reaching out to create this process of, of facilitating the actionable outcomes, of disseminating them, of making them more visible, perhaps, um, and, and then making somebody take an action on them. And I did have a question when I was listening to this, because uh, it, it did sound a bit genuine to me, you know, because there are various venues and avenues in this world where people produce reports and go to policymakers and ask for actions and, and try to create tangible outcomes. 
I, I wanted to ask maybe not only Paul, how IGF is different, different in this sense? Is the IGF and IGF plus the right place to channel this outcome? And this came also with a comment of Minda Moreira on the chat, which said, this is so true about to whom do we go with these outputs? And and about basically answer this question with the question to whom do we go? And sometimes it looks to me, or I, I hear this that dynamic coalitions, depending on, I mean, some of them are more mature in terms of outcomes, but less visible, some of them more visible, but still in progress in, in terms of creating um, tangible outcomes, but still very powerful, like um, Jenna said that youth dynamic coalition is still work in progress, but I hear about a lot of results, which might need more visibility and, and, and more sort of power to be provided, more support. So I guess my question is to all of you, unless Marcus, you have another question. If there is one thing you would like to be changed at the IGF, maybe one more channel, maybe one more platform, maybe one more push at the IGF that will give you more opportunities to create actionable outcomes, what this would be. This is the question for dynamic coalitions but feel free to generally to generally uh, reflect on reflect on my comment if you want to thank you for that so that gives me a very good segue to close the first part of the session and give each of our panelists a short elevator pitch where they can say what would be the one thing they would like to see i would like to ask you last when you hear after you heard all the others can we start with Utah first? What would be the one thing you'd like to say? I would like to see that we all understand our work in internet governance, not as competitive, but that as cooperative. Thank you. Very concise. Uh, thank you. Yeah, short question, uh, Tatiana, that I'd like to answer first. I think that uh, the IGF is the only platform where everybody can meet on an equal footing and all the other internet standards uh, are more or less on specific topics but that's my personal position i think that looking at the igf i think what is important perhaps important for dynamic coalitions is to, to see if they can be integrated and invited somehow in the preparatory process because they're working on substantial substantial tangible outcomes and in part of the strategy discussion of the igf but let me thank you, colleagues and moderators, for this session. Marcus, Apollos, and Mark for getting this session together. And if the IGF is to become the policy incubator the Secretary General of the UN has described, the DC should become more than an appendix to the IGF program and strategy without the opportunity to make a difference through contributing to more tangible IGF outcomes and creating more positive and constructive impact in the digital cooperation. I hope that our discussion today helps the global IGF community to move forward with answers on how to integrate the valuable work of volunteers in the Dynamic Coalition more effectively into the work and output of the IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Before handing to you, Paul, I would like to ask our remote uh, panelist, Jenna, which is the one thing you would like to see, please? I would really like to see um... Uh, partnership between the dynamic coalition because that's like um, that's the key to to achieve all the common goals and purposes that we identify and one last thing is I want to highlight this um, may be my personal opinion but I believe output sometimes not necessary to be a solution but the progress or the process itself could be the outputs also. And I believe with um, our partnership, we can make the discussion outcomes and discussion process accessible to more people. Thank you. Thank you. And now to you, Paul. I would just advocate that the process, there be a process put in place somehow to now allow tangible outputs to go forward Thank you. So with that, we close the first half of our panel. The panelists here are free to stay, but they're also free to go. And I would like to invite uh, the other panelists are, I think, 
uh, mainly remote, but we have one Babu here. Can you come up to and take a seat? And is Professor Gupta, is he in the room? Oh, yes, here he is. Yes, please join us. It's up to you. With that, without further ado, I turn to Amandeep. You can A, reflect on what you heard, and B, I would like to hear also your vision on the Global Digital Compact and how in particular you would like to see what the dynamic creations can contribute. We already had one contribution from the floor that the summer schools made actually a written suggestion to the Global Digital. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, it, it was uh, very uh, informative to listen to uh, the previous speakers and some of the comments and questions uh, from the floor and online. Um, I see a twofold relevance uh, for the dynamic coalitions in the context of the Global Digital Compact. And the first one is with regard to the consultation phase. Uh, where the goal is uh, to use a multi-stakeholder framework and also the lens of diversity, inclusiveness, and closeness uh, to actual happenings on the ground to drive uh, inputs into the uh, Global Digital Compact elaboration process. Uh, so uh, the different coalitions that have been mentioned and within those coalitions, uh, the initiative, for instance, taken by the schools of internet governance uh, to gather inputs, they can be very helpful uh, in enriching the discussions in New York uh, with those live inputs from the ground, which touch on areas, for instance, such as digital health that are emerging, and also areas that have been around since the beginning of the VISIS process, uh, uh, those enduring uh, challenges and uh, problems. The second role that I see is that the GDC is not an end in itself. Uh, it will contain certain guidance that would have to be landed in practice in the work of different stakeholders, governments, private sector, academia, civil society, and the tech community. So these coalitions can then help with that aspect of the GDC. So it's not only the consultation and the inputs, but it's also the practice of the Global Digital Compact uh, beyond its uh, adoption. Obviously, there are challenges and some of the challenges have been uh, reflected in the questions that have been asked. Uh, the dynamicity in terms of both the topics and the membership, how can that be uh, kept up as uh, the tech field uh, evolves as the societal economic implications are better understood or better debated and also the participation uh, it is volunteer participation so those who have time those who have resources have the inclination step forward but can we be more deliberate about more diverse participation uh, in a sense enlarging the size of the uh, coalitions making them more uh, inclusive and then those questions around channeling the output the visibility, who to address, uh, what's the, the right uh, link in a sense. Um, the leadership panel was mentioned. So one of the core functions of the leadership panel is to bring more visibility to the discussion that the IGF and the outcomes that the IGF has. Uh, so that is obviously an important uh, uh, interface. Uh, and uh, post GDC, as I mentioned, there will be opportunities for uh, uh, this interface to be strengthened, to be uh, reinforced. I'd just like to conclude by saying that the concept is very powerful. Uh, if you look back at the discussion on those models of digital governance, digital cooperation, during the high level panel on digital cooperation's work over 2018, 2019, the IGF plus model, which has been picked up for implementation, uh, and there were two other models, and there was one common theme across all those three, which was that you need a networked approach 
You, know, you need to bring together different strands of thinking, different participants around some of these uh, governance themes. Uh, and uh, in a sense, the policy incubator role comes alive through these dynamic coalitions, these groups uh, of uh, multi-stakeholder ex experts. So the idea is very powerful and we need to keep working away at how to implement it better. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. This is, I would say, also very encouraging remarks for the dynamic coalitions. Uh, I would also like to introduce our remote panelists. We have Vishaka Datta from the Dynamic Coalition on Gender and Internet Governance. We have Herman Ramos from the Dynamic Coalition on Data-Driven Health Technologies. And we have Marianne Franklin from the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition. And lastly, we also have a representative of the Digital Natives, Mauricia Abdul Chilunda from the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. And also present here on the panel on the stage is Professor Rajendra Prataputta from the Dynamic Coalition on Internet and Jobs, and uh, Babu Ram Arial from the Dynamic Coalition on Schools of Internet Governance. So I would like to invite them in the order they are listed and first turn to Pishaka Datta from the Dynamic Coalition on Gender and Internet Governance. You have the floor. Thanks so much and thank you so much for inviting me to participate uh, on this panel for the Dynamic Coalition on Gender and Internet Governance. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the relevance of gender as a sort of central organizing principle for the Global Digital Compact, uh, which we've been talking about for a while. Given that the Global Digital Compact uh, you know, aims to come up with an outline for shared principles for a free, open, secure internet for all, these are all words that actually have very, very gendered meanings, right? So when we talk about, say, free or we talk about freedom, we know that even the freedom to use digital technologies is dependent not just on access and connectivity, but also is a gendered phenomenon and, is, and really depends on your gender location, whether you're a man, a woman, whether you're a trans person, etc. Uh, I think similarly, when we talk about a secure internet, we know that the word security, particularly in the context of the pervasive online harassment, violence, etc., that and abuse that we see, is something that needs particular attention in the context of gender, right? And I think we are really getting to a place where we are seeing that practically everything, for example, even if we think of, say, a phenomenon like disinformation, which has become so significant over the last two or three years, and including during the COVID pandemic, I think research is showing that even things like disinformation, which are seemingly gender neutral, actually do have very different gender connotations and contexts. In that context, I just wanted to say that I think for the dynamic coalition on gender and internet governance, there are three priorities going ahead. One is to really talk about gender more broadly as a spectrum going beyond men and women. The second is to really talk about gender in the context of in the internet going beyond online violence to many more things. And the third is actually to demystify internet governance itself for women and other marginalized genders. I'll end on that note. Thanks very much. Thank you for that. Next speaker is Herman Ramos from the Dynamic Coalition on Data Driven. <laughs> uh, good morning, good afternoon, and thanks. Night, depending on when you are, where you are. Uh, basically, my name is Herman Ramos from Mozambique, and uh, I'm talking on behalf of the Dynamic Coalition on Data Driving Health Technology. 
Uh, basically, this uh, dynamic collision was uh, created uh, uh, by analyzing the gaps that exist between uh, health sector and also the digital technology. Uh, our aim basically is to develop educational materials and information materials uh, and make them available to different stakeholders that are basically working on the space of data driving health technology. Uh, basically, for that, we work with different kinds of members from medical doctors, technologists, developers, and we try to engage in a collaborative way and produce uh, different kinds of piece or scientific evidence and uh, different kinds of studies. Uh, we, uh, we aim to explore uh, the relationship with other dynamic state, uh, with, 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 our dynam with other dynamic coalitions, but also we, are, uh, we aim to expand our work between uh, uh, acquiring partnership with different kinds of organizations. That's why during the, the year we conduct different kinds of conference and events uh, related to the internet governance space. And we also uh, are a member of the IU2 uh, technical communities, uh, special on the field of artificial intelligence. So we our aim is basically to produce uh, different kinds of inputs and outputs that can explore in this field of uh, uh, data driving and technology. Uh, basically, we also I uh, understand that uh, this field is quite new at some point because we are also moving to the digital transformation and it's important that we provide the digital literacy not only for expert members but also to medical doctors and also people with disability that uh, somehow are left behind. Thank you. Thank you. And now Rajendra. <laughs> from the Dynamic Coalition on Internet and Jobs. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, as you can see that I am compared to my colleagues underdressed for the occasion. But as we heard yesterday, Vint Surf, who is one of the founding fathers of internet, who said, we should roll up our sleeves and get into action. So I literally, you know, you put that to practice and I'm in my t-shirt, sorry about that. You know, as Dynamic Coalition on Internet and Jobs, we were founded as a result of our efforts in 2018 at IGF Paris, where during the closing remarks, I said that proliferation of technology should not be just for productivity and profits. It should bring people at the core. And I must say that I do not know of any organization other than IGF that has 193 countries and thousands of people who attend. I'm given to understand there are 170 plus countries registered in this IGF with 4,000 people. So I think this makes it the most impactful platform on digital technologies and IoT. Now, given the work that we have done over the years, uh, we have produced, we produce our annual report called Internet and Jobs. 2020 we produced, 2021 and 2022 is in the works. Besides that, I want to draw attention to what we heard yesterday that 2.7 billion people are still not connected to the internet. And one of the other things that we have seen in the last month or so is massive layoffs. I think driving back to what Paul Michel recently mentioned, we're going to have a process for tangible outcomes. So today, you know, I'm going to announce a project here and I know that IGF was founded in Africa and this project I'm announcing is about tangible outcomes. This project is called CREATE, which stands for collaborate, to realize employment and entrepreneurship for all through a technology ecosystem. What we want to do is flip the model where we are looking at technology and automation leading to redundancies and job loss. We want to make sure that internet for all should lead to livelihood for all. I think this is where uh, as a dynamic coalition, we want to make sure that when we meet next year in Kyoto, we'll have a blueprint that we should take internet for all and create livelihoods for all so that there are no job losses, rather there should be job creation opportunities. And I'm immensely thankful to Marcus with whom we have worked with the team. And uh, we hope that our work and our reports will lead to achieving our goals. Thank you so much. Thank you so much also for respecting the time limit and for those who are new on this panel. Again, the same time limits will apply three minutes for all the speakers. Uh, Marianne Franklin from the Internet Rights and Principles College and one of the very old 
so to speak, coalitions. Please, Marianne, nice to see you online. Yeah. And I go to Katoa. Thank you for having me. If I may take 10 seconds extra to share my screen. Thank you. Um, I'm Marianne Franklin. I'm representing the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition. The Charter of Human Rights and Principles for the Internet has been a crucial framework for those committed to up upholding human rights online since its inception at the IGF in 2009 in Sharm El Sheikh and the publication of the Charter and Ten Principles in 2011. Before I continue, I'd like to applaud the Secretary General and their techno te technological technology envoy on behalf of the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition for moving commitments to recognizing and enabling the enjoyment of human rights online up to the next level of action. The contribution of the IRPC, in other words, the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition to the Global Digital Compact, IGF+, Plus, WSIS+, Plus 20, uh, and all other related projects is as follows. I have three brief points. First of all, we bring the Charter of Internet, and, Internet Rights and Principles, the Charter of Human Rights, Human Rights and Principles for the Internet to the Global Digital Compact and Partner Initiatives. Why? Because this charter, as you can see on screen, provides an authoritative bedrock and long-standing resonance to these recent undertakings. Number two, the DC offers over a decade of outreach experience with and through the Charter and through its 21 articles and the 10 principles in partnerships with governments, tech communities, civil societies. By supporting the translation and dissemination of the Charter in its booklet form into many languages as possible, 12 languages, including our most recent Nepalese and Italian, uh, all the world's main languages and the 10 principles, which are nearly 30 languages. Why we take this approach to the outreach work, and we believe it can offer an enormous amount of grassroots community level contribution to the Global Digital Compact, is that it allows people to get, get aware of, to learn about and to organise around digital rights online, human rights and online in particular, from grassroots right up to multilateral institutions, judiciaries, private enterprise. Uh, and this translation work and all that we mean by translation in word, the charter itself, and indeed by engaging others to do the translation is crucial to the future of the IGF, to the global digital compact, and in fact how the internet might look in the future, is because like internet dependent media and communications, which make sense of our world, we make sense of these communication networks through how we use them. So uh, thirdly, we bring to the Global Digital Compact and particularly the Summit of the Future in 2024, all 21 articles of the Charter and the work that we are doing to dig down deeper, particularly around environmental sustainability, which is listed in Article 4, and human rights online at the, at the online and offline nexus through the Charter's articulation of the full spectrum of existing human rights and principles uh, so that the internet for the future can be by design diverse, fully inclusive, uh, respecting for individuals' rights and communities and a contributor to addressing climate change and climate justice. Thank you for allowing me 10 more seconds. I hope that was uh, uh, clear. Thank you very much. I will stop sharing. Thank you, Marianne, for this contribution. Now next is Baburam Arial from the Dynamic Coalition on Schools of Internet Governance. Thank you, Marcus. We School on Internet Governance the Dynamic Coalition is very, very common to others as well. We we are capacity building uh, school and we, this, uh, this uh, Dynamic Coalition contributes to the content of all other uh, Dynamic Coalitions as well. So this synthesizes all the standards and policies and principle and brings to the grassroots label uh, of, of people, uh, user, innovator, uh, in in school on internet governance we have various uh, uh, stakeholders as a participants and and uh, these all participants or or these uh, grassroots contributors build a big uh, ecosystem and and that contributes to the objective of igf that already our tech envoy acknowledged the importance of uh, uh, school on internet governance and this uh, school on internet governance uh, is uh, 
very uh, important, not only because of uh, grassroots uh, uh, engagement of uh, people on internet governance, rather bringing the policies and, and principles to the grassroots and, and bringing those grassroots at the uh, senior levels like regional IGF and, and uh, other forums and IGF forums. Uh, so uh, this is the connector of uh, the uh, all the knowledge and innovations to the global level. So this will be a very significant uh, initiative uh, for next uh, compact as well. So I, uh, on behalf of school or internet governance dynamic coalition, I recommend uh, in, in, in next compact to who promote uh, these uh, dynamic coalition platforms that which uh, has a now this has become very uh, common uh, collaborating uh, forum as well internet governance forum is one forum and dynamic coalition is another forum that brings a process that brings a uh, uh, standard progress and and uh, this brings a very good uh, uh, recommendation to the uh, uh, united nations uh, to this initiative so I recommend uh, also, uh, though it was uh, very, uh, from very beginning, internet governance schools were uh, uh, simultaneously with the internet governance forum, but still sustainability of uh, local level internet governance schools are very uh, significant. So how uh, the compact will address on this kind of uh, initiative also is very important. And uh, I recommend uh, to the compact if we can maintain all these uh, issues, then that will be a very uh, grateful. With the respect of the time, I'll stop here and then uh, join future discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Babu. And I think for the participants in the room, we have realized by now how diverse the dynamic coalition is and how wide range of issues they're dealing with. And again, we have the voice of the digital natives, a representative of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, this time Marisia Abdul Chilunda. Please, Marisia. Thank you very much. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone in the room and on site online. My name is Marisha Abdul Chilunda, as has been shared, and I am representing the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. We are a dynamic coalition that actually consists of representatives from each and every region across the world. And we have been extensively working towards our contributions in making sure that the voices of youth are being heard in, um, in decision-making spaces and we have done so across all regions. Therefore, we do see that this can be, this data that we have collected can be widely beneficial for the digital compact. We know that, um, for example, uh, in every region, the each YC representative focused on gathering data specifically for their region. And so we have, we are able to provide this for the actual report. And we, what we did was we had webinars also throughout the year. With these webinar interventions, we focused on various aspects and also all the thematic areas now being discussed here at the Internet Governance Forum. Therefore, we have positions on various, um, there's various um, topics and, and themes such as gender issues, such as uh, meaningful access issues that we have covered. And we have now the voices of youth that express their views on these matters. We have the various demographics across the various regions of our world. Uh, being stated as well and represented in these webinar discussions, we have this data available and we would love for it to be included so that we know that the youth voices of the world are being well represented when it comes to the digital compact. We also have been working very extensively in terms of collaborating across various youth bodies. So not just within the youth coalition itself, but we have, for example, a very strong uh, collaboration with the Internet Society Youth Standing Group. Uh, the Youth Standing Group also is cross-regional in its, in, in its 
structure. And so even the youth body and the youth voice coming from this community is, is, is widely representative of the youth across the world. And we can, we can therefore uh, substantiate uh, the, the validity of the data that we have collected in the conversations we've been having as being trustworthy. And, and, and can be beneficial for, for, well, any conversation really, not just the digital compact, but any conversation that would really want to involve the youth voices, not just as a separate category, but really coming to the table as being recognized as a beneficial voice for any decision-making process going forward. And really rounding off what we would call a multi-stakeholder approach to problem solving in the internet ecosystem. Um, one of the biggest uh, kind of achievements that we have been able to establish through this collaboration has been right here, uh, it's manifesting now right here at the Internet Governance Forum. Maurice, can you wrap up please with three minutes? Absolutely. Or Very simply put, we were able to have 11 of our submitted proposals at the Internet Governance Forum accepted. And so not only the the official youth-led um, sessions uh, will have youth voices involved, but at the decision-making table, as speakers and rapporteurs, we have youth voices now in sessions across the various themes at the Internet Governance Forum, and this data that we um, uh, are honing in can also be made it available to the Digital Compact. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tatiana, would you have follow up questions or comments and uh, please let us know if there's anyone on in the Zoom room or also if there are in the chat interesting comments. Please Tatiana. Oh, thank you very much and for those of you who are online I just want to know that Aminda Marrera shared a couple of links for the Dynamic Coalition Internet Writing Principles which might be interesting for you all and I just want to well first of all congratulate all the discussants on the achievements of their Dynamic Coalition it really looks and sounds impressive and I would like to uh, refer to what Amandeep said about this space being a policy incubator and dynamic coalitions being, a, being valuable contributors into this policy incubator, either in terms, not only in terms of actionable items, but for example, referring to what um, Bishaka said, challenging, challenging the current narratives, challenging the current environment, actually trying to prove that a lot of what we do actually has impacts like on gender we have not embraced and we have to embrace so what i would like to ask you because it is a very um, marcus feel free to ask any further questions but as we don't have much time for discussion left i would like to ask you in all these achievements in all your work in the context of global digital compact and this is plus 20 what is your main challenge? What are you struggling with? Where we all can help each other and where, where IGF can help you, where Global Digital Compact have you? What would be the valuable contribution to address this challenge from something in this space or maybe from Global Digital Compact itself? If you want to, and Marcus, please, please um, uh, feel free to ask other questions. Thank you very much. No, I'm very happy with your question. And I would like also to turn to my panelists and if the tech envoy, Amadeep, you feel free to jump in at any time you wish, or would you like to wait? Or just... I'd like to wait. Okay. Uh, who first? Yes. Okay. So thank you, Tatiana, for this important question. But I must say that as the world's most impactful platform, that itself is very powerful. The whole idea is to work together, get tangible projects, and roll them out and be uh, time specific. So I think I have no asks from IGF. That's a wonderful team, great support, and very open to ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Babu. Yes, uh, it's uh, very important for, of course, IGF is. And uh, in school on internet governance, we ha we have various new innovative ideas how to uh, uh, make this very inclusive. Recently, uh, many of uh, regional and uh, national IGF and, and uh, also school on internet governance, they introduce uh, various uh, critical issues like uh, gender issues are included, highlighted, and like uh, other one of major issues, artificial intelligence are also very discussed at grassroots level. 
and uh, also uh, this person with disability issue are very seriously considered. So making all these inclusive and innovative ideas and bringing to the this great forum is very significant and, and school on internet governance uh, DC is contributing on this. Thank you. And yes, Polly, do we have a remote question? Yes, Ms. Dad, I would like to comment. The floor is yours. Mishaka, just go ahead. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear properly. Yeah, I, I just wanted to answer the same question and say, I think, you know, one of the things we are finding is that uh, internet governance is a hard concept for many people to understand. Uh, even when people are deeply engaged with the internet, which is pretty much a chunk of the world nowadays, uh, internet governance, because it differs from sort of traditional models of governance, etc., uh, people find it quite hard to conceptualize and to really figure out how they can participate in it, even though it's an open process. So we would love some help from the Internet Governance Forum, actually, on really thinking this through and demystifying internet governance. Bishak, I actually think that your comment goes well with the first comment with the, with the tech envoy uh, about diversity, about actually bringing diversity on board, about diversifying the work, about diversify, diversifying the participation. And perhaps, I mean, it all also goes well with the challenges for your coalition as well. I would like to call on remote panelists. And Mariana, do you want to comment or, or on anything which was said before or answer my question, whatever you prefer? Uh, thanks so much, Tatiana. As always, a cogent question. <clears throat> um, where do we start? The challenges are challenges we all share. Dynamic coalitions are part of a larger uh, network, a part of a larger constituency. I'm going to speak simply from the view of the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition. Uh, and that is that uh, the Charter has 21 articles. It includes the right to development, the rights for women, the rights for children. It draws on all the generations of existing human rights treaties and covenants. To date, we tend to see the emphasis on privacy, freedom of expression, which are, of course, important. But they are not the only human rights that are at stake as our lives become deeply enmeshed in the online and offline nexus. So the challenge is to see the Charter, uh, which has been around 10 plus years, uh, to see it fully recognised and thereby the full spectrum of human rights online become integral to all discussions about how the thing we call the internet looks in the future, so that human rights are embedded in the design, the terms of access and use, the data collection and access terms by all stakeholders, and particularly our colleagues in the tech sector who have such enormous influence on how anything works. I want to see much more explicit acknowledgement, and if I may be bold, less lip service to generalities and more action on the part of the IGF leadership and their colleagues at the UN. So once again, I implored the Tech Envoy and the Secretary General for taking the bull by the horns, if I may use an English expression. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Marcus, over to you. Thank you, Marianne, and I think the question you asked is actually a very central question of the challenge you mentioned is precisely how to link the, uh, the dynamic coalitions, which are autonomous, to the broader IGF, and this is in a way uh, the missing link, the question we have not been able to answer yet. You ask for more recognition but what would be the process to give that recognition? That this is something I think we will need to address. And also, I think in the context of IGF Plus and contribution to the GDC, and also the relationship with the leadership panel, this is, I think, a question worth taking up. But, uh, Herman, would you like to have comments? And also Mauricia on the challenges? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I would say that uh, one of the change that is uh, can result in tangible uh, output will be uh, looking to good eyes because 
as we make partnership with uh, different kinds of organization, working with uh, special for the Nomic Coalition that are working basically with uh, data driving app technology, we find it very difficult uh, because uh, there is no action after producing, for example, uh, scientific evidence. So uh, after the uh, the information material, educational material. So there is no there is no produ production of police recommendation. There is no action uh, to be taken to implement this uh, uh, this recommendation. So I believe that this change can provide the possibility of of providing tangible uh, outputs and also uh, will allow uh, different uh, organizations and stakeholders to participate uh, at IGF with uh, uh, more, 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 more strength and also uh, contribute to the robust uh, partnership in this uh, system. Thank you. Mauricio, what do you have? In the... Uh... YSIG or the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, we love to call it by our acronym, we're quite fond of it. Um, we've had a beautiful experience this year when it comes to inclusion. We, I must say, between the 12, uh, 13 sessions that we had submitted for the um, actual IGF meeting this year, 11 was, 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 was selected. So just that absorption in and of itself has, has really made a big difference uh, in comparison with our experience that we've had in previous years when it comes to inclusion. Uh, what we have also done um, and what we have now seen is uh, that, okay, so we, we've been intentional about increasing the participation of women and girls in all of our sessions. And so what resulted from that is seeing the increase at the Internet Governance Forum as well. We have faced challenges um, with regards to cross-regional collaborations where we couldn't, for example, engage physically with our European counterparts, with our Asian counterparts, because we don't have the necessary support um, for those regions when it comes to attending uh, physical meetings, specifically for our European uh, youth counterparts. So we find ourselves in situations where you'd have uh, the African uh, youth represented, you'd have Asian youth represented, but then we don't have the other uh, regions coming to the party, for example, because, well, there's not, in, not sufficient support for them to travel to where we are. Uh, so this was definitely a challenge that we faced. And then many of, just to close, uh, many of the uh, decisions that was, were accepted what came from our own um, agency. We were the ones who pushed for those. Uh, we would love to see other communities within the internet governance ecosystem really begin to absorb youth voices more into their own sessions that uh, we do not have panels, for example, where no youth voices is represented. Thank you so much. Thank you. And once again, I think uh, we all agree how important it is to have the voice of digital natives to be to have heard. Uh, Yuta, you are co-facilitator of the Dynamic Coalition Coordination Group. You have some comments. Yes, I, I think uh, I would not like to talk about the challenges, but about the opportunities since I'm representing the Digital Opportunities Foundation. And as I have, as your co-facilitator, a good overview on the Dynamic Coalitions, I would say we, we are all working in practice and therefore referring to what the tech envoy said in the beginning, we are in the position to give guidance to land the GDC in practice, but we have to consider how we can do that. We are sometimes we are more focused on theory than on practice, but we all have our basic in, in the practice and therefore I think we are in good position and that would be our contribution. Thank you for that. And the European Summer School on Internet Governance made a good, good example on actually making a concrete contribution to the GDC. With that, Amandeep, would you be willing to give some of your reflections of what you heard? Absolutely. And this is a very positive segue to what I was going to say. So looking at the opportunity, the challenges are there, uh, but I think we have the goodwill and we have the expertise to address those challenges. Um, uh, I was very struck by what was uh, said by Dr. Gupta on uh, this issue of uh, jobs, uh, the opportunity side. Uh, this is an issue that's often neglected in many other discussions, 
So the dynamic coalition have been able to put the spotlight on issues that have not been sufficiently explored uh, and bring them to a level where they start to get notice. And that is often unsung work. Uh, uh, others may then start running away with it and get the glory, but I think it needs to be recognized uh, uh, today. Uh, there is uh, obviously a lot of now, just take digital health, for instance, last few years, so many forums have come up uh, in and around the WHO, but also at the World Health Summit, the Global Digital Health Partnership, etc. So earlier, it used to be easier to be very focused in uh, that thematic area. Now it's very difficult. So we have to make an extra effort, extra effort with the quality of our work. And I just wanted to end by referring to what Paul had said earlier. Uh, he reminded us that this is akin to a standards development process and standards uh, compete and sometimes one standard gets selected and others don't. Uh, and that happens often because, you know, you've grabbed the opportunity and you have spoken with the quality of your work. So it, quality then speaks for itself. I think that's the, the challenge. And today we've heard uh, many, many excellent examples of quality work. Thank you for these comments and remarks. We still have some time left and I would also like to invite for comments from the floor. Or is there a comment online, please, Polly? Uh, oh no, it was my own comment. Oh, <laughs> comment. Am I allowed? Please. No, so one of the things which uh, I am finding interesting as the liaison between the DCs and the IGF secretariat is that some of you stress um, the need for more support and a desire for more cooperation with the IGF Secretariat, while others of you stress the autonomy of the DCs. Given these uh, diverse opinions on the matter, how can we come to a uh, unanimous decision? How do we navigate this? Marco, there is a hand in the in the room, in the online room, maybe to answer this question. Yes. Mariana, please. All right, thank you. Yes, I think, uh, thank you for the question from the floor. Um, I don't think unanim unanimity, being unanimous is what we should strive for. If we are unanimous, we are no longer diverse. Diversity does not mean unanim unanimity. So I think what we need to strive for is a space in which differences of opinion and different worldviews can actually not just coexist, but thrive together. And that's what the human rights frameworks were all about when they were generated and developed and continue to, do, to develop. And that we now have a digital dimension, a network dimension to uh, these existing treaties and covenants. It's a very, very important move. So I have no problem with disagreement. I think we need to perhaps work at mechanisms to manage disagreement and intense differences, but not to obliterate them. The minute we do that, we're not creating uh, a utopia, even if we wanted, we are creating something else. And that's not a world I want to live in. So I respect the question, but I think we shouldn't try and all agree because we can't, it's impossible. Thank you. Mariana, uh, just before I move to Bishaka, I think that Polly's question was on the process. How do we agree on the process of, 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 of IGF secretariat actually helping dynamic coalitions while some of them try to be autonomous? However, I'm going to move to Bishaka. Marco, sorry for taking over the floor. I just want to ensure that our online panelists are heard. Bishaka, go ahead. Thanks. I also wanted to come in on the same question. I mean, I think they are not necessarily opposed to each other. I do think that the dynamic coalitions need a certain amount of autonomy to be able to explore what we want, like sort of the specialist focus that we have. But I also want to say, for instance, we recognize that the dynamic coalition in, on gender, that we could have a much bigger multiplier effect if we could actually work quite closely in a more loose network kind of thing with some of the other dynamic coalitions, right? So, um, so I don't see them as always being in conflict with one another. And I think by and large for all, for the 
dynamic coalitions as a whole to have a bigger impact, we do need a certain level of cooperation, even if we don't sort of fully agree with each other. Yes, and just Tatiana, um, I hear here to Pashaka's point. Uh, I don't think autonomy um, is counterproductive to uh, cooperation and coming up with a common path. But again, these be multiple pathways and multiple levels to work on. That isn't impossible. Where there's a will, there's a way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. And Marcos, back to you. Yes, uh, there's a call, a request for the floor. From the floor, Avridoria, please, Ari. Thank you. Uh, Avridoria speaking. I, I actually don't see that there would be, uh, I'm echoey. I actually don't see how it would be a problem because, I mean, in almost every type of service and help that people get, it isn't ever a one size fits, fits all. So I think it would be possible, and having spent some time playing secretariat in my life, it, it would be possible to come up with a range of offerings, not anything for anyone, it doesn't matter, but sort of ranges of support where, you know, you get the intense package or you get the, we leave you mostly alone, but just check on you periodically package and, 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 and such. So. I, I can imagine that being something workable. I apologize for missing the session. Unfortunately, I was on a panel in another session. So I have no idea what I'm talking about, but thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us in any case. And I think your comment is more than relevant. There's no one size fits all for the dynamic coalition because we recognize their diversity. We are approaching slowly but steadily, I think the end of our allotted time. Uh, I would like to ask uh, each of the panelists whether they would have a final closing remark and our rapporteur, Mark Cavell, will then give his reading uh, of the entire session. Let's start again with Yuta. Hey, that's a surprise to me, but nonetheless, I, I really appreciated this session. I would like to thank all the participants and the speakers in the session. And what uh, was most close to my heart was were well, the voices of the Youth Coalition, um, because referring to Article 12 of the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child, we should not only listen, but we should make the voices of young people heard in all matters affecting them. And what if not the digital environment and internet governance is affecting the life of all young people. So thank you for letting me say this. Thank you for that. And I would also like to invite our remote panelists to give their short elevator pitch. Just imagine you're in the elevator with the tech envoy and you have to say him in 30 seconds why, what is important to you. Let's start with Bishaka, please. Um, I mean, I think what I would say is that we know that the world going forward is hybrid. We know that it's digital and that uh, anybody who doesn't have sort of full access rights, et cetera, on the internet is going to get left behind in the world, sort of the future that we are building and that it's absolutely critical for the global digital compact, therefore to really consider multiple social markers including gender as we think of the future. Thank you. Herman. Yeah, thank you. So I forgot to mention that uh, in our dynamic coalition, basically we develop uh, different tracks. We have a your track. So this facilitates basically the uh, partnership with other dynamic coalition. I we hope so by next year in this case. So uh, I hope that we can uh, basically continue this conversation because as we move to digital transformation, uh, uh, it's important that we provide the relevant, uh, not only uh, information, but also so education that can include different kinds of communities and we ensure that they, these kinds of community are participate at uh, IGF and in these kinds of discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Rajendra. Thank you and Tech Envoy, thanks for the encouraging words. I get that, you know, this could be one of the most impactful and ambitious projects coming out of IGF project. It's not my project, it's everyone's project. We've got to create jobs. I hope you will support us going forward on this. That's what I expect from you. Thank you. That's what I call a good elevator pitch. 
Marianne? Yes, I think what really matters for the coalition going forward in terms of the charter work is to see uh, the digital compacts linking the environmental sustainability issues that we all face to these technologies. These technologies are actually part of the problem as we become increasingly dependent on them. So for me, it's the link between human rights online, environmental sustainability, and um, as, as integral to the design going forward. I think there needs to be a bit of a sea change here about how we consider the environment, the climate, and our favorite technologies within a human rights framework. And that's the work that the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition is working to uh, expand and deepen based on Article 4 of the Charter. So that's our priority at the moment amongst the other things we do. Thank you. Thank you. Babu? DCSIG has developed a great resource for grassroots uh, capacity building. It has built up good uh, syllabus and, and it could be a very good uh, shared asset for the compact. Thank you. Thank you. And Mauricio? Thank you. The Youth Coalition on Internet Governance is fired up and excited to be part of this conversation and to continue contributing in any way possible. Uh, we literally have each coalition um, represented here today. We have voices in our coalition in uh, that can speak to, that can contribute and that can collaborate with every uh, dynamic coalition represented here. And so we say, use us. Okay. Call on us. We are here and we would love to be, uh, we would love to contribute to the conversations being held. And once again, thank you for hearing our voices. And we look forward to much, much more close collaborations going forward in years to come. Thank you. And I very much like you being fired up and excited. That gives real dynamism to our discussion. And now, Amandeep, would you like to give you? Thank you very much. I've learned a lot today and uh, really energized by uh, the conversation. Uh, I think uh, this idea of multiple social markers as a risk management strategy, we don't know what direction technology and business models around that would take. So that really resonated a lot. Uh, also, this uh, lens of environmental sustainability, digital environmental sustainability, both uh, the risks, e-waste, and the pull on resources, but also the opportunity to move towards a circular economy from the current linear extractive model, the human rights aspect, the gender, uh, and the children's uh, rights aspects. Uh, and then coming from the school's perspective, this issue of demystifying internet governance and enhancing digital uh, literacy. And I'm also looking forward to working with the Dy Dynamic Coalition on Youth the data, the evidence that you've gathered through those conversations. Uh, let's all challenge ourselves. Let's try and get a million youth voices into the Global Digital Compact uh, before the summit of the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now let's turn to Mark Carvel, who is our rapporteur. Do you have a microphone that works? Hello, does this work? Yep, okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Marcus. And uh, I have to say, as one of the organizers of this main session, the quality of the presentations here and the thoughts and the fresh thinking has exceeded uh, my expectations. And I hope the key messages that I, I will put together from this session will be recognized as uh, a turning point, really, for the profile of the dynamic coalitions within the Internet Governance Forum ecosystem. An ecosystem that I've followed for many years since I think the third idea in Hyderabad, I was vaguely aware of a sort of move towards groups of stakeholders getting together over coffee and thinking maybe we could work on some issue on a sort of semi-permanent basis. And um, I think all the presentations here and the con uh, conversations that we've heard demonstrate uh, the potential for the dynamic coalitions, if the conditions are right, if the questions that have been raised are answered about how the coalitions can articulate in all their diversity of expertise, the outcomes of their work through the ecosystem, 
and to whom they should articulate their outcomes? These are the key questions, I think, which emerged um, very clearly in, in the session. And we've heard, I think, very helpfully reference to at, at this time of the IGF in transition to IGF Plus, with the appointment of the leadership panel, perhaps there are new ways of thinking we should deploy for the dynamic coalitions to advance their outcomes, be it they be it they actual solutions or methodologies for achieving solutions, as I think was one of the points that was made in, in, uh, in one of the interventions. Um, so that's a key point, I think, for everybody to note from this session, that there is this commitment for dynamic coalitions to contribute to a strengthened IGF, uh, and, but we have to find the ways of doing that. With regard to the Global Digital Compact, we had a very helpful steer from uh, Amandeep that the dynamic coalitions, I'm getting the signal to wrap up, but I just want to finish on this, uh, I guess, as a key point. The dynamic coalitions can contribute both to the formulation and the scoping out of the Global Digital Compact and subsequently to landing the principles articulated in, in, in the compact subsequently. So, so there's a sorry, message. Mark, I have to. Okay, I, I'll apparently, close. Apparently, apparently, it's my fault. Uh, really, at time management, we should have stopped, I think, five minutes ago. And as far as I understand, the Zoom room closes on the spot. So the remote participants are not with us anymore. My apologies to Tatiana. We very much I mean, are with you, but it's all good. I would have invited you also to make a few comments, but I don't think I have anything to add to that. Mark made an excellent summary, and I would also like to thank to Amandeep, who really has given a very good invitation to the Dynamic Coalitions to be part of the IGF Plus and the DDC going forward. With that, I invite you to join me in applauding the panelists for their excellent contribution. Thank you. Um, the session is closed with that. And could I invite all the panelists who are here to come up on the stage so we can take a family photo for the IGF website? <laughs> Thank you. And the session is closed.